Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be looking at explanations of attachment Bowlby's theory. I'm following along with the AQA psychology textbook for A-level year one and AS with the green haired girl on. So the things you need to know and be able to recognise, your AQA specification point states this, explanations of attachment, Bowlby's monotropic theory, the concepts of a critical period and an internal working model. You also need to know that explanations of attachment as a term refers to both learning theory and Bowlby's theory, unless a question specifically asks you for learning theory or Bowlby's theory. Bowlby's theory is also the dominant theory in attachment. And we've just got some key terms we're going to look at first of all, because these crop up in your textbook and you might not know what they are. So evolutionary is a desirable characteristic that is required for survival and reproduction. So it's seen as having something that has advantage, it's desirable. Monotropic is a unique attachment to a single caregiver. This is ordinarily your primary attachment figure. And also innate. This is something that is predetermined. It's a characteristic that is present from birth. So this includes things such as social releases. So this is things like grasping or cooing, something that a baby does. Now, both of these monotropic theory, Bowlby comes along and rejects learning theory because he says if it were true, an infant of a year or two should take readily to whomever feeds him, and that clearly is not the case. So Bowlby's theory is an evolutionary theory, and it's based on the idea that attachment is innate and it's for a survival advantage. So monotropy. If we have a look at this, monotropic in the sense that Bowlby places great emphasis on a child's attachment to a single caregiver. So what Bowlby is saying is that there is this one unique caregiver that is different to all of us and it's the most important one. And the caregiver to Bowlby is the mother, not necessarily the biological mother, but a figure that represents a mother. So Bowlby argues that the more time we spend with a mother attachment figure or primary attachment figure, the better. And why is that? It's put forward here two different laws. So we have law of continuity and law of accumulated separation. In terms of the law of continuity, this states that the more constant the care of the child is, the better the quality of attachment. So if you have the same caregiver looking after the child, and that's quite a constant thing, the better the quality of attachment, the quality will be stronger and it's better for the child. Law of accumulated separation states that the effects of separation between baby and mother add up and therefore the safest dose is no dose. So what we mean by that is we should not separate baby and mother because if you keep separating them, the effects of that keep adding up, piling up, and that's not good for the child, the baby. So we're saying here that the safest dose is no dose, not to separate them. So Bowlby also identified social releases and the critical period. So social releases are innate behaviours. So these are these cooing and grasping behaviours and smiles because these encourage attention from adults and they activate the adult attachment system. So Bowlby agreed that attachment was a reciprocal process in the sense that the mother and baby respond to each other's signals. This critical period identified by Bowlby is around two years. And if it doesn't happen, Bowlby argued that the child would suffer long-term damage. If that attachment doesn't happen within that time, there is consequences and it damages. So what we come back to is that law of accumulated separation, the safest dose is no dose. Sensitive period is something that Bowlby also mentions and this suggests that if an attachment is not formed by around two years, the child will find it much harder to form one later on. Now, the difference between critical period and sensitive period is that it's stating that in the sensitive period, it's just harder to form one later on, whereas the critical period is saying that it must happen around two years.
We also have the internal working model, which was put forward by Bowlby, and this is a mental representation of the relationship between the baby and the primary caregiver, and it acts as a template or a model of what future relationships will be like for that child based on the attachment that they've got with their primary caregiver. So if you think of a child who's experienced their first attachment as caring, loving, reliable, it's likely that they have those expectations of future relationships to be like that. And therefore, they bring those qualities with them to future relationships and have relationships that are like that. But if their first experience of attachment is poor and unloving, rejecting, these qualities are likely to be then with them in future relationships. So there's this link, therefore, between early attachment relationship and later emotional behaviour. And this is known as the continuity hypothesis. Now, a way to remember those particular AO1 points is to think about this acronym. So this is what I was always taught when I was studying this subject is ASK ME. So this stands for adaptive social releases, critical period, monotropic and internal working model and it really does make sure that you cover all of the different aspects of Bowlby's theory in your AO1 description. So if you think that will be useful jot that down and use that acronym because I found that especially useful for remembering the description. If we look at your AO3 now, we have mixed evidence for monotropy. So Bowlby thought that babies formed one attachment to their primary caregiver and that it was a special attachment. It was unique. Only after that particular special attachment had formed was the baby then able to establish more attachments, so like secondary attachments. But we know this is not true because if we think about the Schaffer and Emerson study, they found that in 35% of infants, they form simultaneous attachments to two adults. So they're forming attachments at the same time. So we need to think about, is there something unique about the first attachment or not? So attachment to the mother is more important in predicting later behavior than it is to the father when studies have compared mother and father. And that was research conducted by Seuss et al, 1992. So when we think about it, is it unique we're looking at well it seems to be more important with the mother than it is the father but it could be that that attachment is stronger to the mother rather than the quality being stronger so it might be that the quality is as strong as it is with the mother as it is with the father but it could be that just that the attachment is stronger in terms of it being stronger to the mother, but the quality could be the same. Therefore, we don't have enough conclusive evidence to say that monotropy is correct. We do have, however, support for social releases, so this is a strength. There's research support to suggest that cute infant behaviours are intended to initiate social interactions. And so by doing that, it's important for the baby. So if we think about the Brazelton et al. 1975 research, they observed mothers and babies during their interactions, reporting interactional synchrony. So if you think about that, that's the actions and behaviours being in sync, performed at the same time. And the study, in fact, was extended to be experimental. So it first started off with just observation, and then the researchers told the primary attachment figures to ignore the baby's signals. So they just had to ignore them. If the baby started smiling, the attachment figure would not smile back. So they had to ignore all the social releases. And when the baby's attachment figures ignored those social releases, some responded by curling up and laying motionless. So obviously that is not a good sign and what that does is suggest that Bobby's idea about the importance of eliciting caregiving behavior to infants signals helps to sustain that attachment formation so it is a strength because these social releases are really important for the attachment formation Furthermore, we have support for internal working models. So even though it's a mental representation, it's a template, it is testable in the sense that it suggests that patterns of behaviour will be passed on from one generation to the next. So we can test whether that happens or not. So we've got research here by Bailey et al, 2007, and they tested that particular thing. 
looking for a pattern is that attachment behavior being passed on through generations. So what they did was assess 99 mothers with one year old babies on the quality of their attachment to their own mothers using a standard interview procedure. So in this instance, if you think of a mother and baby, we're on about here, the mother's mother. So the child's grandmother. So if you think, forget about the baby for a minute, you've got the mother and then the grandmother of that child being interviewed because what they're interested in is seeing whether that particular attachment type is then reflective of the mother and the baby. So when they assess them, the researchers observed the attachment of the babies as well to the, their mothers. So they've done the standard interview procedure that's completed and then the mother and the baby are observed because obviously they cannot conduct an interview there because the baby cannot speak but the findings when we look at that is that the mothers that reported poor attachments to their own parents so the grandmother of the child in the interviews were more likely to have children classified as poor according to the observations of mother and their baby and that supports the idea that there is an internal working model and it is passed on through generations a limitation is that monotropy is a socially sensitive idea so there are implications here for lifestyle choices and it's socially sensitive because the law of accumulated separation states that having substantial time apart from a primary attachment figure so the baby having that time apart risks a poor quality attachment remember that the safest dose is no dose and feminists so these are people that want equal rights for males and females they can be women that are putting that view forward or males that are putting that view forward but they're just arguing for things to be equal so what they do is argue that this places a burden on mothers and it blames them if anything goes wrong in the child's life if you're stating that the primary attachment figure needs to be with the baby all the time and it's most likely to be the mother then it's putting a burden on them and saying that if anything goes wrong well you're just going to blame the mother because they need to be there because this research is saying that mothers are important and what it does is it puts women into particular lifestyle choices so they might not return to her work when a child is born because they feel the pressure of having to look after that child in order for them to have this good attachment type and the idea of monotropy has made things a little bit awkward for working mothers so a lot of more women are working now although it wasn't Bobby's intention to put this sort of pressure onto women. We need to be careful about promoting an idea that is likely to have negative social consequences in terms of women being able to work. So it also it suggests that father's role in attachment is not important. So it seems to put a little bit more of a burden on women, but then it, it doesn't really think, oh, fathers are that important. So it's all very socially sensitive because it has a lot of implication for lifestyle choice and finally we've got a strength so temperament may be as important as attachment so your temperament is this genetically influenced personality slash emotional type now Bowlby's approach focuses on the child's social behavior but temperament may actually play a role in that social behavior so we've got some researchers so this is Kagan and temperament researchers suggest that some babies are more anxious than others while some are more sociable as a result of their genetic makeup and those differences are what explain later social behavior rather than the attachment like that first experience so temperament researchers actually go and accuse Bowlby of overemphasizing that importance of a child's early experiences and the quality of their attachment so it doesn't really sound like a strength this but if we look at this last point temperament researchers can explain some babies show more separation and stranger anxiety but it cannot so temperament cannot explain the importance of responding to early interactions so that's that reciprocity responding to interactions that the baby is showing in developing good quality attachments so it's clear that Bowlby's theory is useful it's needed because of these early interactions because temperament cannot explain that so there is actually therefore both a place for attachment and temperament in developmental psychology 
Now, if we move on to your exam papers, we have an AS paper one from June 2016 question. So here we've got Abby had a happy, secure childhood with parents who loved her very much. She now has two children of her own and loves them very much too. The two children make friends easily and are confident and trusting. Referring to Abby and her family, explain what psychologists have discovered about the internal working model. So here's your mark scheme. These are all AO2 marks. If we look at possible applications, we can see already from the item that Abby has a secure childhood and therefore she has this positive internal working model. That template is then passed on through the generation so that her children are also having these good quality, positive, secure relationships. OK, so she had a good relationship with her mother. Therefore, she has a good relationship with her children and the children have a good relationship with friends. So they find it easily uh, able because they're more confident and that's why they can make the friends. And it's all related to that internal working model. Make sure you are mentioning the internal working model throughout and you're using it appropriately. But that's what is going to enable you to get the five to six marks in that level three. So we have an A-level paper one from June 2018. This question is looking at two spreads of your textbook. It's looking at learning theory and Bowlby's theory. It's a discussed question. It's 16 marks. This is a type of question which can get confusing because you've got to look at AO1, AO2 and AO3 for two spreads here. So if we look at the item, we can see that where it's talking about Millie and breastfeeding, that is relating to learning theory. And the second one, which is on about the future development, mother's love that makes it more special, that's looking at Bowlby's monotropic theory. Now, what you've got to do is really break this down and understand your mark scheme. So there's six marks available for AO1. So you want to be doing three marks of AO1 for learning theory and three marks of AO1 for Bowlby's monotropic theory. In terms of AO2, it's four. So you want to be doing two marks for learning theory and two marks for Bowlby's theory. And in terms of AO3, it's a total of six. So you want to be doing three marks for learning theory and three marks for Bowlby's theory. And recommend using that space to plan your answer definitely because you've got so much to do in this question that you otherwise you're just going to get confused okay so here we can see your mark scheme it's got possible content and this is a way that they can bring in more content and test you on more by combining spreads to see if you know how to do this so you need to make sure you understand what questions are asking you for so here we'll look at the AO1 we can we know our learning theory AO1 with the different conditions in terms of neutral stimulus unconditioned stimulus classical conditioning how that plays a role and you've also got the operant as well that strengthens the attachment in that sense then you've also got the monotropic theory which is what we've been looking at so you've got the importance of a primary attachment figure you've also got your internal working model and social releases critical period remember that ask me acronym that can be used here in a sense because you've got to mention those five key points for monotropic theory but remember not to worry too much about your AO1 remember it's only three marks for each of these theories you've got your applications there next and then you've got your possible discussion points so this is your evaluation if we look at the monotropic theory which is what we've been looking at you can see that it says Schaffer and Emerson they talk about the multiple so it's sort of a limitation there you've got the concept of monotropy is socially sensitive putting pressure on mothers underestimating fathers Bailey the study we looked at for internal working model you've got a lot that you can work at here but here also look at the bottom of the mark scheme it says for marks in level three and four there should be a reasonable but not necessarily perfect balance between learning theory and monotropic theory. What examiners don't want to see is you talk about monotropic theory lots and then a tiny little bit on learning theory. You want to sort of be trying to balance it out. It doesn't need to be perfect, as it says on the mark scheme, but we need to be seeing roughly equal amounts. OK, thank you for listening and best of luck with the rest of your revision.